Live from Washington, D.C., it's the 2024 FBLA Week National Presidents Forum. Here are your hosts, Deborah Jacklin and Toby Neal. Good evening and welcome to the 2024 National Presidents Forum. I'm Deborah Jacklin, your high school national president. And I'm Toby Neal, your collegiate national president. We are so happy you are here with us tonight. We have a packed agenda for the next 30 minutes. We're going to share updates from each of our divisions, highlight important dates in the months ahead, answer some of the questions you submitted on Goose Chase, and preview the National Leadership Conference in Orlando, Florida this June. Plus, we're gonna draw the name of one lucky person from each division to win a fabulous prize package. You could win a free NLC registration, a free FBLA merch swag bag, and a free ticket to Universal Studios to use while you're in Orlando. Scan the QR code on the screen to enter. We'll announce the names at the end of the broadcast, so stay tuned. The first half of the program year has been an incredibly busy and productive one for FBLA Collegiate. We hosted two Career Connections conferences in Des Moines, Iowa and Charlotte, North Carolina. Among the highlights were a day of professional workshops led by the experts at the Principal Financial Group in Des Moines. And we got to hear from the president of the Harris Teeter grocery store chain about her career journey and advice while we were in Charlotte. We also unveiled the FBLA Collegiate 101 Toolkit. It's an essential guide to help Collegiate members make the most of their time here. On top of that, we're projected to have even better membership numbers than last year. If you haven't joined FBLA Collegiate yet, there has never been a better time to do so. Deborah, I know the middle and high school divisions are also seeing impressive growth this year. That's right, Toby. The middle school division has more members now than we did this time last year. And the high school division has gained more than 10,000 new members. FBLA Connect, our new one-stop shop for learning, membership, and community, has made it so much easier to join and manage memberships. More than 2,000 members and advisors joined us in Providence, Rhode Island and Dallas, Texas for two outstanding National Fall Leadership Conferences. We also held our Fall State Officer Summit, hosted social media and national programs webinars, and set up our National Officer Councils. We also attended the Association for Career and Technical Education Conference in Phoenix, Arizona, where we also led a day-long workshop for local chapter officers. Together with the Collegiate National Officer Team, we hosted a fantastic American Enterprise Day career panel on November 15th with experts in six career areas, computer science, engineering, finance, healthcare, law, and social media and marketing. It was a great evening. One other exciting thing that's happened this year is that the National Center moved to its new home in Reston. Here's Annika to show us around. Hi everyone, I'm here at the National Headquarters in Reston, Virginia. Oh look, who is it here? It's Alexander Graham, the President and CEO of FBLA. Hi Mr. Graham. Welcome to the National Center, Andrew. Thank you. So, why did FBLA decide to move to the new headquarters? So we were in our space for about 30 years. Uh, we had our own building over on what's called Association Drive in Reston. Uh, we were housed there with a number of other education organizations, but as most things over time, those organizations began to move out, the economy has changed in the area, and the property was actually fairly valuable, and so we ended up selling the building as good business leaders uh, and have reinvested those funds back into the organization and actually in more student-facing program than hanging on to a piece of real estate. Awesome. That's good business practice right there. So how long have we been in this space and how long do you think we're going to continue to be here? Yeah, so we moved in uh, right around Halloween of this year to this particular space um, and I believe we're going to be here about 10 years, that's what our lease is, uh, but it provides a lot of flexibility. Currently we can have up to 25 staff, possibly even more if we made some minor modifications. It also comes with a wonderful conference center that's part of um, the facility that we can use at any time. And that can host over 50 people for training programs. And that also has a really nice uh, casual area, which you've experienced as a national officer. 
where you can have some downtime and um, really create that collaboration space that we look for in today's work environment. Amazing. And then my last question for you is, what has been the best part of the new headquarters? It's all about collaboration. So honestly, it's the way our staff can come together or when we have guests, visitors, our board of directors, the space is incredibly flexible. It's built around the way people like to work today, whether it's standing desks or team rooms or just collaboration space. Um, we even have a wellness room if an employee is not feeling particularly well, maybe a bit of a place to rest for a little while. So um, we have a great access to our own kitchen space, which is really helpful just to keep people motivated and um, feeling good about being at their job each day. That's wonderful. So in this new space, we're thriving with collaboration and accessibility. So the next time you're visiting Virginia, Northern Virginia, please make sure to stop by the National Center. Back to you, Toby. Thanks, Annika. One of the benefits of being an FBLA member is our chapter engagement programs to help students bond with one another, learn about career development, and serve their community. Bethany Duke is here to tell us more about them. Hey, Toby. Each year, FBLA's membership program help our chapters succeed, allow our members to do more together, and earn recognition at the National Leadership Conference. Middle school members, the Merit Award Program is a prequel to Champion Chapter and offers five different ways each month for you to engage as a chapter and earn points. You have until May 15th to submit your Merit Award entry, so there's still plenty of time for you to get involved. High school members, more than 25% of you are actively involved in our Champion Chapter program, a 30% jump over this time last year. That's amazing. This program rewards chapters for building a program of work, doing activities together to achieve more, like recruiting new members, touring a local business, and helping out neighbors. The fourth section of Champion Chapter celebrates career and technical education and wraps up later this month. After that, you can do Champion Plus to earn additional points before the May 1st deadline. And our collegiate members can participate in the Outstanding Chapter Award program to promote strong chapter management and the presence of FBLA Collegiate on your campus. Again, you've still got time before May 1st to submit your activities. Deborah. Yesterday, the national officer teams spent the day on Capitol Hill sharing the importance of career and technical education with members of Congress from across the country. We discussed how FBLA has helped us develop personally and professionally. We also advocated for the reauthorization of the Perkins legislation, which recognizes FBLA and other career and technical student organizations. The Perkins Act is up for reauthorization this year, so it was a great experience to make our case directly to the legislators who will vote on this important bill. We also met with Assistant Secretary for Career, Technical, and Adult Education, Amy Lloyd, at the U.S. Department of Education, along with the national officers of our sister organization, FCCLA, we represented more than 400,000 students as we shared how our organizations promote skills like leadership, critical thinking, time management, self-confidence, and content knowledge in areas like financial literacy. It was our pleasure to make your voice heard in our nation's capital. It has been a busy FBLA week for sure, and I know our sponsors have been so critical making this week possible. Kimberly, can you tell us more about this? Toby, the activities that allow us to celebrate FBLA Week, from the Advisor Toolkit to tonight's broadcast to the Goose Chase Challenges, couldn't happen without the generous support of our sponsors. Each sponsor has committed to supporting a day of FBLA Week and making these activities possible. They include Funds to Orgs, Long Island University, Equity, FICO, Business U, Men's Warehouse, and be more colorful. We appreciate their support of FBLA. Thank you for making a difference in the lives of our students. Now, since today is Why Wednesday and Valentine's Day, I know a lot of people are wearing pink to show their love for FBLA. They're also sporting merch this week to show their FBLA spirit. Let's check in with Cadence and Cameron for the latest offerings from the FBLA shop. 
Cameron, the FBLA shop has some great new items. Should we take a look? Definitely. Let's start off with this new crew neck sweatshirt that'll keep you warm in the winter months and help you celebrate over 80 years of FBLA. Plus, they pair great with these lounge pants, which are incredibly cozy and were a big hit at the National Fall Leadership Conferences. Cam, I heard that you were wearing them in Providence. Well, don't believe everything you hear, but they are super cozy. Now let's move on to these member and advisor polos that are wicking and will help you stay cool in Orlando. And also, make sure you pick up one of these new lapel pins with over 25 different options of rockers to show off your leadership roles in the state and local levels. And even if your position does change, you can always change the rocker to match your pin. And with graduation season right around the corner, you're going to want to make sure you stock up on FBLA cords and stools. And don't forget to pick one of these super soft long sleeve t-shirts up to match and show your support. We even have FBLA socks and a really cool FBLA backpack. And don't forget about the stickers and so much more. So check out the FBLA shop today. You're looking great, Cadence and Cameron. In addition to the chapter awards that Bethany talked about earlier, FBLA also offers individual achievement awards for members. The two types of lead awards, the Explore Award and the Aspire Award, introduce middle school members to FBLA, help them craft their leadership style, and learn more about a business skill or content area. The Business Achievement Awards, or BAAs, offer a way for high school students to learn more about FBLA, develop their personal leadership style, and expand their business knowledge. Students can also complete a capstone project that solves a real-world problem and helps their communities. The top capstone winner competes at the NLC and takes home a $5,000 check. And at the collegiate level, the Excellence Award gives members a chance to assess, explore, and develop critical skills needed to pursue various career paths. There's still plenty of time to get involved in all three programs. Visit FBLA Connect to learn more. Thanks, Samira. One of the many benefits of being an FBLA member is a chance to win scholarships and other award recognitions. Here are Andrew and Caleb to tell us more about that. With spring just around the corner, it's not too soon to start thinking about applying for FBLA scholarships and awards. That's right, Andrew. Did you know the NLC scholarship provides up to 50 members with free registration to the National Leadership Conference worth $195 and a $500 check for travel costs? If you're thinking about attending the NLC, and we hope you are, this is a great way to help fund your trip. Applications are open now and close April 15th. We also hope you'll apply for the Distinguished Business Leader Scholarship. It's worth $500 and is awarded to high school seniors who plan to join FBLA Collegiate and Collegiate members who are actively involved in the association. Applications are open now and also close April 15th. The National Technical Honor Society also offers FBLA members the chance to win one of two scholarships valued at $1,000. This recognition is open to FBLA members who are also NTHS members in 10th grade or higher. Applications are also due April 15th. These scholarships are another valuable benefit of belonging to FBLA. You must be a paid member to be eligible. So be sure to visit FBLA.org for more information and apply for these scholarships today. In the months ahead, there are several partner programs that offer a great way to learn more about financial literacy and earn recognition and prize money. Fez and Katrina have more information. FBLA has a number of ways for you to develop your skills, earn additional recognition, and compete for prizes through our national partner programs. So, Katrina and I want to share details about a few of them. Faz, you'll want to be sure to take part in the stock market game with the hypothetical $100,000 to trade stocks, 
bonds, and mutual funds, this virtual challenge is a great way to build your investment portfolio and hone your financial skills. You can compete as an individual or as a part of a team, and it's open to members in all three divisions. Registration is open until March 8th, and the competition ends April 19th. Another great program is Lead for Change, which offers middle and high school students the chance to build their leadership skills and help solve a problem in their community. Schools can apply to win up to $10,000 for their school or a nonprofit organization. The second Lead for Change deadline is May 10th, so you have plenty of time to learn more and dive right in. Be sure to check out all of our partner programs on the Sponsors and Partners page on the FBLA website. And good luck! One of the highlights of the year for the National Officer Teams is our trip to Washington, D.C. to celebrate FBLA Week and share our story with government leaders. If you're thinking about ways to get more involved with FBLA, why not run for office? Check with your chapter advisor or state leader for more information. And think about running for national office. You'll have the chance to be the student voice of FBLA and get to meet a lot of great people from all across the country. Both national officer teams will be hosting webinars for potential candidates this spring, so be on the lookout for more information. The deadline to apply to be a national officer is May 15th. We've had a busy FBLA week so far. On Sunday, we were thrilled to see so many of you helping your communities on Service Sunday. And it was great to have you join us for the Mentor Monday Career Panel webinar. LoveSack founder Sean Nelson, author Scott Jeffrey Miller, and six accomplished FBI alumni shared their stories of how mentors can help us launch and grow in our careers. Having someone with more experience guide you as you go into your first job, advise you on the skills needed for your career, and plan out the next steps you should take is key to your success in the workforce. It was a great evening. And we loved hanging out with you Tuesday for the Battle of Regions and Collegiate Conversations. Don't forget, tomorrow is Thankful Thursday, a great day to share your appreciation with your local chapter advisor and state leader for all they have done to help you. Check out the national social media accounts for a special tribute to them. And we hope you'll join us Friday for more tips on your professional development. The Collegiate National Officers and FBLA High School alumni will present the Next Steps webinar to help high school members transition from school to college or a career. We'll hear from students at Duke, Harvard, and Southern Union State Community College, as well as a college financial advisor and a community college advisor. That's at 7 p.m. Eastern. Meanwhile, former Collegiate National President Madison Kramer will lead Backpack to Briefcase webinar at 7.30 Eastern to help Collegiate members learn how to take the leap from college to the workforce. Both of these webinars will be chock full of advice and opportunities to ask questions as you plan for the next phase of your journey. Be sure to join us. And on Saturday, the Collegiate Officer Team will host the State Officer Summit featuring FBLA alum Bryant Collier and the High School Regional Vice President will be celebrating their state's accomplishments. Now, we want to take a few minutes to answer some questions that you submitted on social media. Benjamin and Jonavi are joining us for that. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Sobi. How are you two? Good evening. Great. Good evening. Fantastic, fantastic. It's been a great week so far. Glad to have it. Glad to have both of you here with us today. We have a few questions, as you said, Toby, from the membership. Uh, if you'd like, I'd like to start with our high school national president, yeah, Deborah. Of course. My question is, what first got you into FBLA? Was it a teacher, a friend, or was it something else? Wow. Um, well, I joined my, uh, or I joined FBLA about seven years ago in sixth grade. And to be quite honest with you, I had no idea that FBLA was even a national organization. But I just joined because all of my friends were, and I kind of wanted a way to get involved in my middle school community. So I ended up competing in competitive events. I went to all the chapter events. I attended conferences, and I realized I absolutely fell in love with the organization. And I've been a part of it ever since. Yeah, great answer, Deborah. It's clear that you have an um, intense passion for FBLA. Yes. Yes. Now, Toby, being as experienced as you are with this organization, what advice do you have for FBLA members who want to make an, a meaningful impact in their communities through their FBLA chapter? 
Thank you, Jonavi. I would have to say, if you're looking to make a meaningful impact in your community, you have to start with your community leaders, um, both in government and in small business, whether that's you know your local um, city council or your local um, county commissioners. Those are people that are going to be able to help you uh, make sure you bring awareness of FBLA through the local government or even in small businesses by partnering with your local chamber of commerce, as my, uh, as my um, chapter has done at Stanley Community College for several years now, um, but also making sure you partner with local organizations that you know, raise awareness in the community for you know, underprivileged people. Um, so one instance that we do is um, with the community table, where we partner and we run a food bank at Stanley Community College that FBLA partners with to really help um, raise food for the homeless. So there's so many great opportunities, and it all starts making sure that you make those connections with your local leaders. Fantastic. Thank you, Toby. Now, Deborah, as a high school national officer, why do you think students should join FBLA in middle school? Oh, well, definitely everybody should join the middle school division if possible. Um, I would say I started my FBLA journey in middle school, and that's really what kind of launched me um, into FBLA. Um, there's so many differentiated experiences at the middle school division, um, and in the middle school division, we really like to focus on career exploration. So for my middle school, we ended up doing a job shadowing day where I was able to actually shadow a local attorney. Um, aside from job shadowing and career exploration, you learn so many meaningful business skills and leadership skills like teamwork, even writing a resume, how to send an email. And these are just so fundamental um, in getting you a head start into the FBLA journey. Yeah, and it's definitely so full circle how you've come from a middle school member to the <laughs> national president now. So, Toby, throughout your FBLA journey, what has been the moment that has touched you most as a leader? Well, that's a tough question. I'll have to think about that for a second. Um, hmm, I would probably have to say it was past this past fall at our Career Connections Conference in Des Moines, Iowa. I was finishing up uh, leading a workshop on finding you know, your passion, your place, and purpose in life. Um, and I was just really able to you know, share my story um, with the, our members. And you know, after I was wrapping it up, one of our members came up to me and she started sharing her story with me and she started actually crying and it was, it was really moving and she wanted me to know that you know, me sharing my story with her really helped her feel seen and that her lived experiences you know, were really valid, um, that other people you know, go through an, a non-traditional life, um, not just straight to a four-year university. And I, so you know, realizing that you know, being in this role and being able to you know, not only by sharing my story but that helps elevate others' voices who have similar journeys was just really, really impactful and like touched me the most. So I would have to say that that is definitely the most um, meaningful um, thing that I've experienced as a leader. Wow, wow, that was lovely, Toby. Thank you. Now, moving on. Now, Deborah, can you clarify for me real quick? You started in the sixth grade? Yes. In the middle school yes. division. So you started in the middle school division before the high school division? Yes. Fantastic. So in that case, you've come a very far, long way to the yes. national office. What's the most important lesson, I know this is a big one, so please forgive me, the most important lesson you've learned in FBLA so far? Oh, wow. Um, I would definitely have to say taking initiative is so important. Um, whether it's going out and asking for that internship, um, reaching out to that teacher, um, talking to a local business member, um, just taking the initiative can open up so many opportunities for you. And I think that um, there's really no, like, there's, you can't really get, um, you can't really hurt from that if you go out and take that opportunity. So I would definitely say take initiative and can't hurt. Run for national office if you want to. Um, there's nothing to lose from it. Yeah, great answer, Deborah. Now, if any of us know Toby, we know he has some amazing career aspirations in the future. So, Toby, how do you see FBLA affecting your career 10 or 20 years down the line? Um, so that's actually uh, really funny because you know when I started um, you know my career in college I was actually going to be a history professor that is what I kind of set my mind to I came into college with a very set goal of what I wanted to do um, and it wasn't until you know my college professors you know talked to me and then really my FBLA advisor got me into the organization and showed me you know maybe you know I should try out some other things experience some stuff and you know I started you know taking on leadership as a local state and national officer with an FBLA getting to you know lead um, for all of our thousands Thousands of members across the country, and you know, speak to them. Really, you know, advocating, and it really showed me that I have a deep love, you know, for advocating for others, you know, lifting other voices up, and really fostering change. Um, and it really kind of cemented my desire to go into a career of public service and government. So I would definitely say, with without FBLA and without those lived experiences, I would not be as confident um, that the career choice I'm about to make is going to be the one for me. 
Wow, amiable. Very good, Toby. Thank you for that answer. Now we're coming to our time. It's been fun so far, but I have one last question for both of you this time. What would you say to someone who is thinking about joining FBOA? Um, I would say definitely join. There are so many different opportunities within FBLA. Um, there are so many different things for you to learn. Um, and there's also just something for every single student or type of person within this organization. So um, like Toby mentioned, he wants to go into politics. There's students who want to go into business. There's just so many different avenues that FBLA supports. Um, also, there's just so many skills that you're going to learn. So I would definitely say join FBLA and there will be a whole world of opportunities that open up for you. Fantastic. And just to piggyback off of what Deborah said, like as she was mentioning, it's really for everyone. And you know, when I went to college, I real, you know, it was really great getting my education, but I always felt like there was something missing, something that I wasn't getting from my college campus. And it really is those lived experiences, and that's what FBLA provides is really giving you that opportunity to take what you're learning in the classroom go out and experience it in such a low risk environment. And if you're a college, middle or high school student who you know really feels like they're really wanting to get out there and experience the world, there is no better place to do it than FBLA. So as Deborah said, join, because it really is a world of opportunity that awaits for you. Thank you, Toby. Thanks for all those questions. If you have other questions for us, please send them our way. Now, let's go to Elise, who is standing by with information about our theme contest for the upcoming program year. Elise? Our theme this year is Together We Achieve. Designed by FBLA member Barbara Morton from Virginia, it was a perfect way to embrace our redesigned logo and show how we can all accomplish more by working together. Now, it's your turn to help shape the next program year. Come up with a theme name and logo that expresses your hopes and goals for FBLA and submit them by March 31st. Visit FBLA.org for contest rules and guidelines. Be creative and have fun. We'll announce the winner later this spring and then at NLC. Speaking of NLC, what can you look forward to in Orlando? Let's take a sneak peek. you have plans to be there. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Before we go, we're gonna draw the names of our three lucky winners. Mrs. Smothers, can we please have the envelopes? Thank you. Deborah, who is the middle school winner? Let's see. We have Aubrey Morin from Crestwell Middle School in Oregon. And for high school, we have Callie Street from Great Bridge High School in Virginia. Toby, who is our lucky collegiate winner? Our winner for collegiate is Lainey Poe from Stanley Community College in North Carolina. Congratulations to our winners. And thank you all for tuning in and have a great rest of your FBLA week. It was really good. It was so good.
education helps us lead so we can help others succeed. Learning opportunities abound at VLA. Build you up from the ground. Building networks, making friends. And our progress never ends. Business makes the world go round. Together we are success bound. Building great relationships. Improving on our leadership. Communication is the key. It opens possibilities. Yeah, all the members love to say. We are, we are, we are the FBLA. Communication is the key. It opens.